Welcome to this meditation, Beyond Judgment, Seeing Unity in Diversity. In life, we often construct mental and emotional barriers that isolate us from others, driven by judgments that underscore our perceived differences. These judgments, which can be subtle or overt, entrap us in karmic patterns that obscure the fundamental truth of our existence. We are more alike than we are different. By focusing on these artificial divisions, we unwittingly reinforce the very barriers that keep our hearts closed, ironically thwarting our deepest desire for connection, love, and intimacy. This meditation is adapted from Ken McLeod's exploration of equanimity in his book, Wake Up to Your Life, and it invites us to dismantle our judgment barriers so that we can lessen our suffering by seeing beyond superficial differences to the essential sameness that connects us. By shedding our layers of judgment, we discover that our common humanity is far more binding than the distinctions that appear to separate us. Before we begin this meditation, please identify someone in your life who you find challenging or who triggers you. Someone you have clear feelings about, but who does not overwhelm your emotional responses. Choose a person whose presence stirs discomfort or dislike yet is manageable within a self-guided meditation setting. Please refrain from choosing someone who has caused you harm or trauma. Such cases like this are better navigated with the support of a qualified professional in a one-on-one -on -one therapeutic setting. This practice is designed to safely explore and transform everyday reactions and judgments in a controlled and supportive environment. As we move into this guided meditation, you'll be led through a series of reflective inquiries designed to deepen your understanding of your judgments towards the chosen individual. It's important to maintain a meditative state throughout this practice, allowing yourself to fully experience and feel your responses to the inquiries rather than analyzing or writing down your responses. This approach emphasizes the experiential aspect of this practice, helping you to engage more deeply with your emotions and insights. At the conclusion of the practice, you may choose to journal any insights or revelations that arose during the meditation. This is optional, but it can be a valuable tool for further reflection and understanding of your journey. So let's begin. Begin by getting settled and closing your eyes and taking a few long, slow breaths. And noticing the surface underneath you. and all the different places where the surface comes into contact with the different parts of your body. Now, bringing your attention to your breath, Noticing where your breath goes as you breathe in and where it goes as you breathe out. With each breath, 
drawing a little more closely into your inner world. And into that place where everything that you've ever known or sensed or felt or imagined or dreamed or experienced is held in timeless awareness. And as you find yourself moving into this place, just allowing all of your inner senses to begin to open. Your inner sense of seeing and hearing, tasting, touching, smelling. But especially allowing your deepest intuitive knowing to open quite widely. And just knowing that you're here to explore and to understand and to learn more about the ways in which your reactive patterns, especially your judgment, has kept you from seeing others clearly and how your perception has created divisiveness, thereby keeping you stuck in the belief that others are fundamentally different from you and perpetuating the experiences such as fear, or anger, or hurt, or jealousy, or greed, or any other emotion that causes suffering. And just knowing that it's safe and that any discomfort that you may experience in exploring these patterns is just stuck energy that's ready to move. And that you can allow this energy to coexist with the feeling of safety without having to do anything with it. So now bring to mind a particular person that you dislike or who you find challenging to relate to and imagine them standing in front of you. And remember to choose someone who your fear feelings are clear about but not overwhelmingly strong. And as you bring this person into your awareness, allow yourself to sense or feel what exactly it is that you dislike about them. And we'll begin with their physical appearance. And just noticing if there's anything about their physical appearance that you dislike. How they dress. How they are in their body. Relaxed or tense or stiff or aloof or graceful or clumsy. Just noticing if there's anything about their physical appearance that you dislike. Perhaps 
you feel like they're a slob or that they're overly concerned with what others think about how they look. Maybe you find them very unattractive. Or very attractive. And so you judge them. And just allowing these dislikes to be there without having to change them without trying to manipulate them. You're simply bringing any dislikes that you have about their physical appearance into the light of awareness. So let's move on now to their emotional being. and noticing if there's anything that you dislike about their emotional being. Maybe they're moody or they're not present or maybe they're just way too happy for your taste or maybe they're always depressed. Perhaps they're overly aggressive or the opposite, overly passive. Maybe you judge them for not being emotionally intelligent. So just noticing what judgments you have about their emotional being without trying to change them, without trying to manipulate your judgments, just bringing all of your judgments about their emotional being into the light of awareness. And so let's move on now to their mental being. What is it about their mental being that you dislike? Are they overly rational or are they overly irrational? Are they cynical? Do you judge them for the beliefs that they have or the values that they have? Or perhaps you judge how they relate to the world. Or maybe you judge the things that they're interested in. Just noticing all of the mental aspects of their being that you dislike and that you have judgments about. And you're not trying to change your judgments. You're not trying to manipulate your judgments. You're allowing all of your judgments to be seen in the light of awareness.
Now, turning your attention to how this aversion, this dislike of this person developed. Are your feelings about this person based on personal experience or maybe what you've learned about this person from others? Is your dislike of this person based on how you met them? Maybe a particular incident in your relationship with them? Or perhaps just a feeling that's grown clearer over time? Just noticing how your aversion, your dislike of this person developed. And noticing if one physical or emotional or mental trait dominates your feelings. And do you dislike everything about this person? Allowing all of your judgments about this person to be seen in the light of awareness without trying to change them or manipulate them. Just letting them be seen in the light of awareness. Now consider the possibility that the reason why you dislike this person is because you have some belief that the true nature of this person is that thing that you dislike about them. For instance, If you dislike this person because they're emotionally out of touch, then you must believe that who this person is, is their emotional capacity. If you dislike this person because of how they take care of their personal appearance, then you must believe that this person is their body or their physical appearance. If you dislike this person because of their political affiliation or religion, then you must believe that they are their political affiliation or their religion. So is it true? Is it true that this person is their beliefs or their appearance? 
or that this person is their emotional capacity or political affiliation. Is it true that this person is the sum total of all their likes and dislikes? Is it true that this person is their intellect or lack of intellect? Is it true that this person is their personality? Now notice how you've formed a judgment about this person based on your internal representation of them and your attachment to that internal representation. While it might seem that they are their emotional capacity or their beliefs or their personality, they're not. This is simply your internal representation. So now bring this person once again into your awareness. And now begin to notice all the ways that they're just like you. Just like you, this person has parents and is a son or a daughter. Just like you, this person wants to be happy and free from suffering. Just like you, this person has felt anger and happiness and rage and delight and disappointment and grief and pain and pleasure and awe and excitement and every other emotion that you've ever felt, they've felt too. Just like you, this person wants to be loved and seen. Just like you, this person has needs and desires. Just like you, this person has used unskillful strategies to get their needs met. Just like you, this person also has judgments and opinions. This person breathes the same air that you do, and the sun doesn't shine any differently on this person when they walk out their front door than it does on you when you walk out your front door. And just like you, this person cannot be defined or described by labels or the stories that you have about them. They're not the color of their skin. They're not their religion or political preference. They're not their social status or their gender. They're not their beliefs or their opinions. In fact, just like you, this person is an expression of the one infinite divine consciousness. And your personality might not like their personality but beneath their personality is the same fundamental essence as you. The tradition of non-dual Tantra teaches us that while 
there is apparent diversity, we all share the same fundamental nature. The divine consciousness manifests itself in infinite variety. No two snowflakes are alike and no two people are identical. Just like every snowflake is made of water, every person is an expression of the divine love intelligence. So once again, bring this person into your awareness. And notice how this new insight, this new understanding shifts your feelings about them. Holding this person in your awareness. Recognize that the presence looking out from their eyes is the very same presence that looks out from your eyes. This recognition, when it's a felt experience, will have the effect of softening your entire being, making you less rigid and guarded. And this shift may be subtle at first, but with practice it becomes more profound, gradually replacing judgment with equanimity. Challenges arise when we deny our sameness. Judging others is essentially the denial of our shared fundamental essence. Understanding that we all share this fundamental essence has profound implications on how we interact with the world and how we perceive others. When you truly get that everyone is an expression of the same divine consciousness, the notion, any notion of harming someone, intentionally harming someone, becomes completely unimaginable. We're all fundamentally interconnected and to harm someone else is to harm ourself. This realization deepens your compassion. You begin to see that every person, no matter how skillfully or unskillfully they act, is driven by the same fundamental desire to be happy. And this insight softens your judgments and opens your heart, allowing empathy to flow forth. Embracing your fundamental sameness with others lifts the heavy burdens of hate and jealousy and envy and pride and fear and all other emotions that stem from perceived separateness and misunderstanding. All of those, they start to dissolve and are replaced by a pervasive sense of peace and connection. So when you transform your judgments into a deep knowing of our shared 
and fundamental sameness, you dissolve the divisions created by perceived differences. And this naturally results in the experience of connection that's unguarded and authentic. Now, gently bringing your attention back to your breath. And allowing your breath to be the bridge between your inner world and your outer world. With each breath, bringing with you all the insights that you've just had in this meditation. And as you slowly make your way back into the room in your own timing, just allowing all these insights to become deeper and stronger and more profoundly connected to your consciousness and knowing that the effects of this practice will have profound implications over the coming hours and days and even weeks ahead. Namaste.